Searching for the right video lights can quickly feel confusing and overwhelming. Options and price ranges are practically infinite. But good lighting is incredibly important, in some cases having a bigger impact on your video than your camera. So I hope my footage of these iFootage lights can help enlighten you to be filled with delight. Like when I turn these on and off, you're filled with delight. Like delight right here? Okay. Normally, this is about how bright our yard is. There's some market lights and some landscaping lights and it's pretty dark, I swear I'm here. In fact, if I turn on this giant light right here, you'll kind of be able to see me. This is only at 3%. You turn this all the way up. Here's 100% brightness, probably too much. But if we take it down to maybe, this is a 320 watt light at 17% brightness. I'll turn that off for a second. This over here is a 220 watt light at 3% brightness. This is a 60 watt light at 100% brightness. So let's mix these all together then. In what was pitch dark, I have actually a pretty, pretty nicely looking set, lit as the kids say. Now these are the iFootage Anglerfish series of lights. And while I'll be using them as an example in this video, the things I'm talking about will apply universally to pretty much all video lights. I have been using the iFootage Shark Slider Nano and Friction Arms, kind of like these ones around here, on a daily basis for a couple of years now, and I really like them. iFootage reached out and said, hey, we're releasing some lights, do you want to check them out? And I said, sure, not thinking that I was going to end up with a full-on lighting setup. But this is actually perfect, because what they sent was essentially a small, medium, and large light, a 60 watt, a 220, and a 320, which is perfect, because one of the most common questions I get is, Tom, why are you sweating so much? And the answer is it's 100 degrees outside. The other common question I get is what size video light do I need, especially for a home studio or a home office type setup? And this is perfect because lights around 60, 220, and 320 are some of the more common options out there. And while iFootage did send these lights, this video is not sponsored. I don't have to make a video about them. I don't have to say anything specific. They're just pretty cool lights. I do like them, so thumbs up. So first and foremost, if you do video work, it's very important to dedicate yourself to dedicated video lights. And the reason for that is because they're not going to cause all kinds of weird problems that regular like house lights or non-video lights can cause. Even super cool looking RGB bulbs or whatever, they'll start to flicker and do weird stuff depending on your frame rate and your shutter speed. If you get a dedicated video light, whether it's for photo or video, no matter what frame rate you're at or shutter speed, it's never going to flicker. It's never going to cause any problems like that at all. These lights are attracting a lot of bugs. There are all kinds of video lights out there, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to be using these, which I'm going to be calling studio lights. And I don't know if studio light is the correct term, but what I mean is these just have a lot of traditional mounting options, lighting patterns, and just other features. And I don't think most people necessarily need a whole bunch of studio lights in their setup, especially if it's like a home setup, but having one dedicated key studio light can be key to a great lighting setup. A good, reliable key light will last a really long time, be super versatile, and basically just save you a whole lot of headaches in the long run. I do think these specific iFootage lights are really awesome. They come in at a good price point. They have a decent feature set and they're built really well. They come with these cool padded bags and some nifty accessories. They're definitely worth checking out if you're in the market for some new lights. And each of these lights, like most studio lights, have several kind of standard parts. First, the light itself, shocking I know. Actually, hopefully not shocking because that, that would be an electrical problem. A power supply and a reflector. While most studio lights do come with those things, the big things that you'll need to think about are stands. Depending on the light kit that you're getting, it may or may not come with a stand. Right now, I'm using a stand that iFootage sent. Actually, two stands. This is like a monopod stand over here, which is actually pretty cool. And then a C stand right here. And if you aren't familiar with C stands, you should see my C stand video so you'll understand why they are really, really awesome. And there's also a very good chance you'll need some sort of mount that's going to help you shape or diffuse the light. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Most studio lights have what's called a Bowens mount. And this is a standard mount across all kinds of lights for decades. And that lets you attach all kinds of things like diffusers and snoots, which is a very fun word, and other kind of modifiers and attachments and all kinds of fun stuff to your lights. And the cool part is because it's been around for so long, the range of accessories you can get for Bowens mounts is huge. The price range is pretty much whatever you can imagine for it, and you can very easily mix and match manufacturers. And of course, as is the case with pretty much any video light you'll find these days, these are LED lights. And that's great because even the giant ones don't take a ton of power and they don't really get very hot. Giant lights like this boosted up to, there it is, 100% will get kind of warm. 
and you probably don't want it to be right next to you because it's also super duper bright, but they're not going to get anywhere near as the dangerous temperatures of the incandescent lights of years past. So let's talk about these lighting sizes because chances are, if you're looking for a video light, you're probably considering something in this range, 60, 220, 320, probably don't need anything beyond that. The light above me is the 60 watt anglerfish light. 60 watts is pretty much the most standard, common, affordable studio light that you're going to find when you search for video lights. And generally 60 watts is going to be more than enough for pretty much most home setups or small setups if you're gonna use it as a key light. The iFootage one specifically is very tiny and very adorable and it doesn't actually come with a Bowens mount. It has this really adorable little reflector here and it can take little tiny attachments. But the way that I have this lantern attached to it is it does also have a Bowens mount adapter. So you can go from this mini type mount here to a standard Bowens mount on the 60 watt light. Whatever light you're getting, it's a good idea to make sure it either comes with a Bowens mount or is able to be adapted to one. Whoa. Oh, it also comes with this, which is really cool. It's a handle that then can take a V-mount battery, so then you can have the light kind of wireless, and that's super fun. This light is in a diffuser at 100% brightness, so if I turn off the other ones, there. Now we're only, you can turn that way, it's okay. Now we're only getting the light from the 60 watt anglerfish. So I actually do think this is a really great place to start if you're looking for a light, because even if you decide that you wanna upgrade later on to something bigger and more powerful, there's always going to be room for a good 60 watt light in your setup as a fill light or a hair light or some kind of accent light. You really can never go wrong with having one around. Now, even though 60 watts is probably enough for even like my normal setup, my preferred power is the 220 watt here, which I know might seem crazy because when I'm using it as a key light in my studio, I usually keep it at like 40% brightness. So why not just get a less powerful light? But the reason for that is I love diffusion. And when you shine a light through a diffuser, it's naturally going to lose some brightness. And then I also like extra, extra soft light, which means I like to bounce the light through a diffuser off of a wall or a bounce card or something, which just takes more power. And I like having 200 watts because I never have to worry for my setup about having enough light. Another reason that I like 200 watt lights is they kind of start having more robust feature sets. It has a native Bowens mount and it also has this power box here, which all of these lights have effects. This is gonna be really fun. So we have, something that's gonna give me a seizure. These are all daylight balanced at 5,600 Kelvin. They're not bicolor lights. These also do have an app that works with them as well, but I really love having the nice power box like this and does have a strap and a quarter 20 mount on it. So that way you can mount it to a light stand or hang it from something or put it on the floor or whatever. There is a small fan in the power supplies and there are small fans in the bigger lights, but the fans are not nearly loud enough to be picked up on camera in pretty much any normal circumstance. And both the 220 and 320 watt lights have these external power supplies that give you access to more features. These are incredibly well built and the most fun part about them is they have a very silver fun to press power button. It's like supremely satisfying to use if that matters to you. And as much as I do like this 220 watt light, part of me does actually wish that it was 216 watts instead. I know that's very nitpicky, but I just think it would be really cool if this light could turn down four watt. And of course, last but not least, this is the 320 watt light, which is getting blown around in the wind because it's got this giant softbox on it, which is basically just a sail at this point. Right now, it seems to be pretty good at about 16% brightness. Now, one thing I will say that I've noticed recently is a rise in the popularity of 300 and 600 watt lights in home studio setups. And far be it for me to judge whatever you wanna do in your home studio setup, have fun, spend your money however you want. But if I'm keeping my 200 watt key light at 40% most of the time running through like double or triple diffusion, chances are if you have a 300 or a 600 watt light in your home studio, you're gonna be keeping it on like less than 10% for 90% of the time. And since price does increase with power output, I would recommend not going too overboard unless you're looking for light for actual production work, you're traveling to all kinds of different sets, you need to illuminate a large space, or you're going to regularly be doing lighting outside, even in the daytime, that's where you need something that's maybe super bright. For most of us, a light 200 watts and less is going to be more than enough for pretty much all of our needs. Now, beyond the lights themselves, I would like to modify your opinions on these lights by talking about light modifiers. The possibilities really are endless when it comes to ways that you can modify lights. And so here I've got some of the more common methods. I've got soft boxes, soft box with a grid, a lantern, and of course, 
We've got just sort of standard reflectors, which is almost like not having a modifier at all in some ways. Most studio lights will come with reflector. This is kind of the standard light modifier. And they don't do a ton except really sort of amplify and direct the light. It almost turns it into kind of like a spotlight. And that can be great for certain situations, but what you'll probably find in a lot of cases is it's going to cause a lot of very harsh shadows. Now, if you've just spent a bunch of money on lights and you don't have the budget for more modifiers, what you can do with your reflector is actually just bounce it off of a wall or a ceiling or some other surface where the light can then be diffused and reflected back. Stop turning away. So as great as reflectors can be, it's important to reflect on how you're going to use them because pretty quickly you're probably going to want something a little bit different, probably a softbox. This is a ginormous 90 centimeter softbox, which is why it's acting like a sail in the wind and it's just going wherever it wants to go because it's massive and it's very, very deep. This is a much smaller softbox. I believe this is 60 centimeters. This is much more practical for like a home studio setup. I've been using a small softbox like this for years in my personal studio because it just doesn't take up as much space as this does, even though this bigger, brighter diffuser does give off softer light because it's, it's bigger and it diffuses the light more. Now, one thing I really love about these iFootage softboxes is that they have dual layers of diffusion. They also come with the grid, which is a great way to direct soft light without causing too much shadow. So that's if you want to control light spill, but you don't want those harsh shadows, that's what you would use something like a grid for. It's great. The grid is great really too windy to be doing this right now. But inside the softbox, you actually have the option to add another layer of diffusion. This isn't super uncommon with higher end lights, but what's really great about these is the way that you add that second layer of diffusion. It's a really high quality know, piece of diffusion material and you just attach it with snaps. And I saw that and I thought, oh snap, this is way better than what I've used before, which is oftentimes these little kind of flimsy clips that even if you're very careful with the lights, seem to break pretty easily. I think it might be because even though the lights don't get super hot, they do generate heat and then the clips are getting heated up and cooled down and heated up and cooled down and then they just start failing pretty quickly and that's really frustrating and, and sort of tough to fix. Now up here I have something really interesting which is a lantern. These are an absolute pain to set up. If you've ever struggled to set up a camping tent, this is just as intense as that. Good timing on that light move there. Lanterns are great, and that's what I wanted to show in this situation actually is because, I'll turn these lights off again. This is probably a little too harsh for this specific situation, but hopefully you can kind of see the soft light that's being projected in every direction from the light. It's really, really cool. And if you have a couple of these, this is a small lantern. There's actually a larger one that iFootage sent as well. And I also don't want to skirt the issue of the skirts, which is basically just a black piece of material that you can attach to different parts of the lantern and stop light from projecting in that area. So it almost is like you turn it into a more traditional softbox. If you wanted to save some money and you think you're going to use a lantern and a softbox, you could get a lantern put a skirt around it and then remove the skirt when you want the full light source. It might be something that could work for you. So because it is so fun to get something like a new camera, it can become really easy to overlook the importance of lighting in your video setup. But if you remember that a camera's entire purpose is literally to capture and process light, then it starts to make sense why you wouldn't want to overlook the importance of lighting within your setup so that your setup can fill you with D-Light. And speaking of things that are delightful, thank you to everyone who helps support my channel through Patreon and YouTube channel memberships. And it's probably also a bright idea to check out some of my other light-related videos right here.